What's up, people? Today, right now, right this second, John Kelly. Yo, man, love of the new vids. Check this girl out who switched from junk to carnivore and lost 120 pounds. Okay. Um, <clears throat> yeah, like... So when, when people switch to some, I, I don't know, I, I like carnivore, I think it's great, blah, 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 but like, I mean, you gotta eat carbs too, like, let's clarify that. Uh, w when people switch to like a fad diet, they switch to being vegan, they switch to fucking carnivore, switch to whatever, keto even. Um, the reason they lose weight is because these diets are so restrictive, they, they limit processed fucking shit food, which is why they lose the weight. It's not, you know, you can, you know, I personally think eating lots of meat is, is preferable, but but that's why all these people lose all the weight. It's not like, you know. Anyway, whatever. Let's watch this. Hi, guys. I am finally doing it. I keep uh, stalling doing this type of video just because I haven't done it before. But you know what? We're just going to we're gonna go for it. So here you go, my first YouTube video. I wanted a way to introduce myself and share my story and catch people up. And the longer I do this, the more I realize I can't keep you know, reintroducing myself on the Instagram page. So I'm excited to share with you my weight loss journey, carnivore, you know, my husband and I, some steak tips. Those are the kind of things that we're gonna do videos about. So this video is really just to say hi, to talk about the process of how I lost 120 pounds in less than a year on carnivore. And then we'll start making some videos, give you some tips and show you about our daily life. I want to give a little bit of backstory. If you have seen me in other YouTube videos before or if there's a podcast, we did carnivore cast, I will link some places down below. You can hear a longer list of things of interviews that we've done, but I wanted to be able to give you a brief synopsis and catch you up at this point. So a little backstory, I, I've always been heavier. I have, you know, went to college and put on 30 pounds my freshman year, right? When I was growing up, my mom baked homemade bread every day. I grew up kind of in a really rural town. We grew our own vegetable garden. We had, you know, meat that people had donated to us or like local farmers and um, that had given us. And so really whole foods diet, a lot of potatoes, that fresh baked desserts that we used to make all the time. And it, there wasn't really any junk food. I remember there was, it was a really big deal that once a year on our birthday, we got to pick out a box of sugar cereal. And that was the one time we really got any kind of junk food was on our birthday, so fancy treat. So when I went to college and realized I could buy whatever I wanted, I started eating sugar cereal every day. And you know, I had fast food really accessible to, for the first time. Um, and I put on 30 pounds my freshman year of college. And really there began my life of yo-yo dieting. Um, I went on a low carb diet and or kind of a restrictive diet at the time and lost some weight. And then spent the next really five years going up and down that same 30, 40 pounds. I probably hit 200 pounds for the first time right around my freshman year of college. And spent the next several years, you know, losing 20, gaining 30. Yo, this is so crazy to me how these women get up to like these like insane weights, 240 pounds. Fuck, man. That's like, that's just so insane for me to think about, right? I like, I've been like around 180 fucking my entire adult life. I'm, I'm not like a small person either. 250 pounds on a fucking woman? Jesus, man. Like, what do you, how do you, how do you get that fat? Holy shit. Um, okay. Anyway, whatever. She lost some weight now, I guess you know that's good um i don't know why did you tell me to watch this just just to watch check this girl out who switched from junk okay so like here here's here i'm fine good for her she lost the weight she's not gonna die in the next five years like good for her um check this girl out who switched from junk to carnivore and lost 120 pounds this is what people focus on unfortunately right like i don't say unfortunately but like this is like that guy jimmy moore like why is he so popular like he went from 400 to 230 and now people like buy his book because he's not like it doesn't look like a bowling ball anymore the guy still looks awful st looks terrible it's obviously not healthy you know she, i'm not saying I'm, I'm not saying she looks awful and it's not healthy like she's lost a lot of weight good for her but like still still has a like a lot more weight to lose like, this is not and i don't know did she just start her like journey or something was just oh had been maintaining it yeah i mean i don't know like i i I, don't, I just don't get excited about these people yeah good for you you lost the weight but you still don't look like really that good so like why why is anyone taking your opinion seriously i'm, I'm so sorry i'm really sorry but like but but why actually like why would why would anybody take this person's opinion unless you're like 500 pounds like <laughs> if you're like 350 pounds and you want to get down to like you know 190 or something okay <laughs> all right i guess take her advice but like why why is that a goal for you you know that's like i i don't know it just seemed you know why wouldn't you just go for like a better goal i guess i, I don't know i'm i'm really sorry i'm that person. lose 30 gain 40 and up and down uh about five years ago i actually tried a vegan diet for a year i decided that had to be the best way for me to lose weight. I watched the movie Forks Over Knives and like so many other people, I believed the vegan movement and that it was a way to health. And so I tried vegan diet for a while. I was eating vegetables and tons of sprouted oats and quinoa, every kind of vegetable, spinach smoothies and chia seeds and hemp hearts, all that kind of stuff. And really was, by the end of that year, was extremely unhealthy. I lost 50 pounds 
At that point, though, cutting out fast food really resulted in weight loss. But I also had a lot of issues with, with acne, with energy, endurance. My hair started falling out everywhere. And really, by the end of that, I was dealing with some severe malnutrition. Um, my teeth were having a lot of issues as well. And I was kind of starting to rapidly develop a large amount of cavities and gum disease. All kinds of really fun stuff that, unfortunately, most people who are on a vegan diet get over time. At that point, I just started reintroducing meat and foods again. I think for Christmas, we had a giant steak, and I was like, oops, not vegan anymore, and really never went back after that. But the problem is, I also introduced some junk food and fast food at that point, and really just went back to my old ways. I have always been somebody who's good with restriction, but never good with moderation, which is a whole topic for a whole other video, but I have no sense of moderation whatsoever. Which is why then, you know, I met my husband, we um, got pregnant right after, well, had a baby right after we got married, and right around that time, you know, he found out he was type 2 diabetic, and so he went on a low carb diet. I had my daughter, and went on a low carb diet pretty quickly right after that. And lost weight, I lost I think 60 pounds. I had, you know, around that point I was around 230 pounds and so I got down to around 160 and was feeling great, but it was that low carb diet and we kind of took a break. At that point celebrated hitting my weight loss goal and went out for two sticks and had a big pint of ice cream that night and really never looked back. Um, gained another 40 pounds back, got pregnant with my son and really just decided I was gonna, you know, be pregnant and eat whatever and got up to 250 pounds at that point. After I had my son, I just really never got into the groove of trying to lose weight again. Um, and it took me a couple years of that same, I would be on a diet for a couple weeks and then be off for a couple months and back and forth and really could never stick to anything. I was in this constant state of, I would start that on Monday and by Wednesday I already messed up, so that must mean the whole week is shot and I'll just eat as much as I can. I'll really get out of my system this time. I'll just eat I'll just all the foods that I've been creating, I'll just eat them all this next five days and then I'll start again Monday. And then I would do that, so basically binge for five days, eat whatever I wanted. Monday would come around, alright, I'm back on the diet again. Well then by like Wednesday or Thursday, I was off again. I'd have one bad thing and decide, you know what? It's just because I really wasn't ready. I didn't have I didn't have Oreos, I didn't have the things that I wanted, so I would go off the rails again for several days and wait again until Monday, and it just was this constant cycle of all of that on again off again. Finally, my son was going to be two, and this was in March of, actually, I think January, right? January 1st, I always started the diet, and really tried to start another low-carb diet. I was good for most of January, and then same thing went off again. Of my daughter's birthday at the end of January, and I remember having cake, and then deciding, well, there goes that. I'll just eat back on again. Finally, around March of 2018, I hit my highest weight of 263 pounds. Went to the doctor, and they weighed me. Uh, I weighed more than I did when I went to labor with my son, and he was almost two. So that was a pretty profound wake-up call for me, to be honest. So I started another diet again, just like all the other ones, and I was ready. I mean, this time I was really physically, mentally, it felt like the same starting a diet as anything, but I was, you know, every time I failed, I would just get a little more determined to stick with it. And I knew in January I had been strict for the whole month and had lost like 25 pounds, but I had gained it all back between the end of January and March. I'm really good at losing quickly and then turning around and gaining it all quickly. So March came, keto was a big deal. March of 2018, so I started keto, tracking, macros, did the whole thing, learned about intermittent fasting through that. So by the time we hit to April, I was down to two meals a day, snacking, still tracking a little bit. Uh, let me get my timeline here, make sure I tell you anything. So oh, um, you know what I think this comes from? I'm, I, so I'm, I'm watching this, I'm wondering like, because this is, this is a common story, right? How many times have I heard this fucking story? A million times. You've, I'm sure you've heard it. Like, this is every fucking woman on the planet. Like, really. Um, and I'm, I'm wondering, like, what is it? Like, why? Again, I'm not, you know, not trying to brag or anything, but why don't I have this problem? Why, why does this problem seem so strange to me? And why, why do I not have it? And I, that's what I was thinking as I was, you know, listening to what she's saying. I'm thinking to myself, well, the only thing that really I could think is that getting fat to me seems like it would cause me so much pain and discomfort not physical pain emotional pain right that i i can't imagine what what my life like i i wouldn't want like if if you told me that i had to be fat or i would die or something i i, I don't know i would it would be i i would i don't want to say i wouldn't want to be alive anymore but i it would severely impact my like level of happiness <laughs> like severely uh, I would, I would, you know, question like where else I would get joy from, right? I, I get, I get so much satisfaction from being fit and being what I, I think having a nice body that like to, to not have that, like you're, you're taking away such a massive source of like joy from me. Right. Um, and I think that's really what it comes down to is that it's just not that being fat does not cause these people enough pain. They, they, they're, they're not losing anything by being fat. She's already married. She's already got kids. She's fucking, what is she like? I don't know. She, she's a girl. When you're a girl, you're blonde. Like, guys are after you no matter what. You know, like, is it really that bad? Fucking go eat your ice cream and Oreos. Like, how's that really affecting your life? Yeah, maybe you feel like shit sometimes, but you're a girl. Like, what, how, how hard is your life anyway? Sorry, but like, really, how hard is it? You know? Um, not saying you don't have problems. Everybody has problems, but like, I don't know. I just, I, I imagine my life being so hard if I'm not fit. It's like, it would be so hard. Like nobody would like me. <laughs> I'd be ugly. <laughs> like, <laughs> I don't know. It'd be terrible. What, what, wh why would I want to live? Like, it'd be so bad. I, I actually think that. Um, and, and that's to be, to be clear that that's why I exercise and eat healthy and do all this. I mean, yeah, I'd feel like shit physically if I eat bad food and don't work out, but that's only like half of it. The other half is, is like, obviously like let me state this like it's to achieve a look right not fine i'm not like a bodybuilder or anything but like 
I need to be better than most people, right? I don't need to be the best in the world, but I need to be better than like anybody on my block at any given time. I guess they, people just don't have that. They just don't care. So I got the down to, you know, lost 20 pounds that first month doing keto and was still tracking everything. But at that point I was eating a lot of fat. I was still thinking that you had to eat as much fat as the keto macros tell you to. And you know what, in the beginning when I weighed 263 pounds, I was able to do that. I could eat that much fat and still lose weight. But then at some point, you know, I would stall. And that's really where the fasting had come into play. Uh, I had to reduce my fat content to be honest. Like I couldn't eat the fat that I was. And the other thing is during that keto, I was so worried about my keto macros and hitting my fat macros that my protein was very low and my hair started falling out. So I was doing all this fasting, but I was really protein deprived. And that was even as of March of last year. So once I moved into April, I was doing two meals a day. We had learned about fasting from Jason Fung uh, and read a lot of that stuff. My husband was doing this along with me. By the time we got to May, I really had pumped up the fasting. I was doing one meal a day by that point. Whole foods, I had cut out all of the keto processed foods. I cut out the Quest bars, I cut out the, um, I never did the Bulletproof coffee and stuff, but I had learned enough to know that that wasn't gonna be helpful to me on my goals. And by May of 2018, I was eating veggies, meat, and a lot of macadamia nuts because they're extremely addicting. Uh, and I lost like 20, 25, 30 pounds a month. But really by that point I was down you know, 50 pounds by the time we hit like July. And by that point, after I lost that first 50 pounds, I had been strict the whole time. Then I started really stalling out and I started having uh, a lot of digestive issues. That's when we started researching carnivore. We heard the Joe, Sean Baker and Joe Rogan. Um, and I've joked about this before, but definitely I thought Chris was crazy for thinking that she didn't eat vegetables and figured that, you know, I would give it a try for a week. And at the end of the week, I had a big salad and completely wrecked my system and my stomach. And by that point, I knew that at least for now, I wasn't going to eat veggies. And I had no concept yet that this was going to be the way I was going to eat forever, but it was worth to me giving it a shot. And so by that point, um, I also learned about Cole Robinson, who is, does a snake diet. And I will warn you if you're going to look up Cole, like he's definitely not family friendly content. Um, he was definitely the harsh dose of reality, though, that I needed at that time. To have somebody just tell me that you could stop eating and you're not going to die and you can fast. And so I really started incorporating longer fast at that point, 40 hours, 72 hours. I did a, you know, was search carnivore by that point. And really, if I ever deviated from carnivore, it was to have some macadamia nuts. And that was a, a, my occasional treat at that point. By the time we got to September, I had been at search carnivore doing those 40 hour fasts, having some macadamia nuts along the way. So I decided, you know what, I got to step up my game. We'll cut those out completely. And I went down to meat and eggs and bacon and cheese. I was still having some sour cream and things like that. Um, and by October, I hit 100 pounds weight loss. So from starting in May with keto and transitioned to the summer to carnivore. And by October, I had hit, lost 100 pounds which was fantastic. And I think for the first time I had gotten to a point where I had planned to have like my hundred pound cheat day. And I hit that day and just decided, you know what? I'm feeling so good. Why would I want to ruin this momentum with a cheat day to celebrate, you know, losing weight. That's what I'd always done before. And so, I, I mean, results are so addicting that I just kept going and decided as long as I'm still going, I'm still going to keep, keep going and keep it up. So that's where I, every time I kind of hit a stall, I would adjust something and change and push a little harder and push a little further just to try to keep those results going. Um, once I hit December, I had been stalled for a pretty significant amount of time. I lost hundred pounds in October. By the time we hit December, I really only lost another maybe five pounds in those three months. And I really was doing the same thing. One meal a day, meat, cheese, eggs, bacon, pork rinds, all that good stuff. So at that point, I realized that I had probably just been overeating this whole time. I upped the fasting once we hit December and that's when I really cut out dairy. To me, it wasn't, cheese definitely does cause some inflammation for me, but if anything, having cheese makes me want bacon, makes me want pork rinds, makes me want this. And they're not physically satisfying. String cheese to me, I could eat an unlimited amount of string cheese. And the same thing with bacon and pork rinds, it never is gonna give me that full feeling. And it's something that I easily can just eat and eat and eat. And so cutting those out not only helped me to reduce some bloating and digestive issues that I was still having and drop some weight that way, but also cut out all those calories. I know carnivore is not about tracking calories and necessarily restricting your calories. I was eating a really decent amount of beef. By that point, I was eating one and a half pounds of beef a day. Oh, um, what I don't understand is like all these people, like how, how do I don't understand these people. They say they try all these diets, they don't work and they fuck yo-yo diet, blah, blah, blah. Like why, why would you not, like, I guess, I guess it never occurs to people, right? Why don't you just copy what the healthiest people are doing, right? Why don't you just copy what they're doing? And it's, it's, is it not obvious what they're doing, right? Like, y like look at the people who have nice bodies, okay? who actually like look fit and healthy, athletic, let's say, right? They go to the gym, they eat healthy food and they don't eat shitty food. They don't worry about all this bullshit, like up my fat, cut out pork grinds, ate cheese, didn't eat cheese. Like, is it is it a mystery to people? Like what to actually do? I, I, I wonder, I, I really do wonder, like, is it, be because honestly, it, it seems like, and you know what's funny is that all these women make all the exact same mistakes. It's like they all have the same exact thought process. They're like, I'm gonna starve myself because that's what I think will work. Oops, I fucked up. Now I'm gonna eat like a pig. Um, and then next week, you know, I'll starve myself again. And they just do that. It's it's like every, like what what book are they reading that, that this is what they are they think is the proper course of action to take? I don't think they're reading any book. I think they're just fucking inventing the wheel like as they go along, making shit up, you know? Um, like why would you not just copy the the people who do it the right way? I don't know. Um, yeah, I don't know. But I was also adding an additional thousand calories from bacon and cheese every day that was holding me back. And so for January, Sean Baker declared it at World Carnivore Month and I decided I'd already been carnivore for a while. I'm gonna step it up and do beef only for 30 days. And that made such a difference. I 
instantly started losing weight again. I lost, which is at that point of how much I lost, I dropped almost 20 pounds just in January. And I think part of that was inflammation and bloating that I was hanging on to from still keeping cheese in my diet and dairy in my diet. And then there was also this large amount of fat loss because I upped my beef intake at that point. I was eating closer to two pounds of beef around that time. And yet I cut out all those additional excess calories that I was just consuming mindlessly. So it helped me with fasting as well as really propelled my weight loss. So at the end of January, 2019, been about 10 months on this diet or on this clean way of eating. And I had lost 120 pounds. Since January, right, this is July. I have the same weight. I fluctuated a little bit here and there, but I have not gone below 140 pounds in the last six months. With that being said, I still have had progress. I can see, and I've taken pictures and I've shared those on my Instagram. I can see a major difference in my body composition. Since January, I definitely have lost body fat percentage since then. And I've used a little tracker at the gym, but I think we all know that's not a really accurate way of measuring that. So according to that machine, right, I'm down 4% body fat since January, but I'm not really putting too much stock in that. Uh, I will say though, in the last six months, I feel really good. Uh, I did have, and I'll talk about this on another post, but I did have, in the last six months, I have one like cheat day that not only set me back physically by a month, but it really set me back mentally. And it's, it's one of the main reasons why I just know that I can't have small cheats. And I will do a whole discussion on this at some point, but I am not somebody who can just eat good 90% of the time. It is. To me, there is so much freedom in eating beef only or eating strict carnivore and to try to incorporate any kind of moderation to on a birthday have two bites of cake. Like there's no such thing to me as two bites of cake. It doesn't exist. I don't have a cookie. I can't have an Oreo. I need an entire sleeve of Oreos. That's just not how I operate. So currently I'm you know maintaining and, and figuring out what long term this looks like for me. I have been happiest over the last year with one meal a day. I feel like that allows me to eat as much as my previously obese body wants to eat and I feel super full. And then I am somebody who needs that mental restriction of you are not eating again for the next 24 hours. And yet when it comes time to eating again, you are gonna be able to eat and feel physically full. I have incorporated lots of other fasting. We'll have a whole discussion on fasting so you guys can ask all those great questions that you have. Um, 48 hour fasts are something that I've done almost weekly for the last year. When I was looking to lose more, I was doing them twice a week, even a 72 hour fast at one point. I've done longer fasts. We'll have a discussion about extended fasting. I did a seven day fast recently with a group of people and I found a lot of healing through that. I definitely dropped some water weight that I was carrying. However, I've had a hard time coming back to food since then mentally. Uh, I've found myself overeating on carnivore. Uh, um, so, I don't know. Maybe I'm just a fucking Nazi or something, but like, people when people lose weight like this like notice it, there was like one mention of the gym but the only thing she said about the gym was how she was like testing her body fat percentage that's the only time she's mentioned the gym this entire time right um there's no like yeah and then i started working out more and then i like started lifting weights i started doing this like, z like I, even like walking around the block nothing zero um she says she has a gym membership and like, again, fine. You don't need to want to like have a nice body. So I don't know, I would like, am I, am I an asshole for saying that? You don't need to like want to have a nice body. I don't know how else to say it. Um, that's your choice. But like, why are you, you know, you're, you're not losing weight for your fucking health. Like, let's be honest people. You don't fucking care about your health. Nobody cares about their health. You know, you're going to die someday. Everyone's going to die someday until you get to that point, everyone still feels pretty bad about everything all the time anyway. Your health is like, maybe you notice if it gets like really fucked up, like way worse than, than whatever the status quo is. Nobody actually like cares about, oh, I wanna be more healthy, blah, blah, blah. Like, come on, you wanna look good, okay? And, and what looking good is, is like thin, you know, with a little bit of muscle. That's, that's like a good look. I mean, I don't know what her life is like. Maybe she's really busy. Maybe she has like 10 businesses, but like, and I don't want to pick on her. This, this is just an example of people who want to lose weight, but for some reason it never occurs to them to like actually just go to the gym. And she said she went to the gym. Maybe she goes to the gym all the time. She goes 10 times a week and I'm a fucking asshole for like saying she doesn't, but like why, why don't people like, why don't you do that too? Like, I, I, I almost want to say, like, I, I almost don't even, not, not that I don't care. I don't really care about anybody, but like, okay, great. You lost the weight, but you, you still like, maybe compared to how you were before, you look great, amazing, but like, you still don't look like, I, I, you know, I'm an asshole. Fine. I wouldn't look twice. You know, most people wouldn't look twice at you. you. And, and by you, I'm not saying her. I'm saying like somebody looks like this. So like, why are you not, like, why not add the other thing in that will get you like the best result, you know, and also make you feel better and let you eat more and blah, blah, blah. That said, asshole rant over. What she's doing well, oh, mad, eating lots of meat. Okay, so I probably should have mentioned that earlier, but like, th those are two very good things. It's just like, where, where's the resistance training at? Like, why aren't you doing it? Um, yeah, anyway. More food since I came back from that fast. So I don't know if it's related or if it's the types of foods. That was one of those moments where I started thinking I could have pork rinds and then I have cheese and pepperonis and then the next thing you know, I'm like sniffing jars of peanut butter in my pantry. And while that sounds dramatic, that is the reality that I have. Um, 
sometimes it's very overwhelming to think that I just can't have a normal relationship with food. But uh, I think that the best thing about carnivore is the fact for me that I have been able to almost break free from that. I, I'm never going to be somebody who can just have a slice of pizza on a Friday night and go back to eating good on Saturday. But since I'm able to, this is the first time I've ever been able to stick with something. The fact that I have maintained a weight loss for the last six months is shocking. I shocked myself in that regard. And my goal is to, to if I weigh the same thing in January of 2020 as I did in January of 2019, I mean, we're going to have a big celebration, something that you know isn't food related. I'm going to buy myself something very pretty because uh, I want, you know, this would be the, the longest that I've really ever been able to maintain any kind of weight loss. And I think that the relationship that I have with food is something that I will continue to struggle. Oh, all right, I'm over it. Like, okay, so everyone, do you know how, like, let, let's say, let's just say, thought experiment. Let's say that I told you, even as inconceivable as this might seem to some of you, to some of my viewers, that you could have a great body, uh, feel amazing, and still eat as much as you wanted sometimes of your unhealthy pizza and peanut butter and cookies and Oreos. You could still go crazy sometimes. And you could, you knew that you would have the discipline to get back on your healthy diet the next day. Would you want to do that? And if you would want to do that, would you like me to tell you the secret to that? Yes, no, maybe. I'll pretend you said yes. Here it is. Okay, here is the secret. It is going to the gym and lifting weights. That's it. Because when you lift weights, your appetite goes up and you have a lot more freedom with what you can eat because when you go to the gym, you build muscle. And when you build muscle, your metabolism speeds up. And when you go to the gym and you work out with weights, you are much more sensitive to the food that you put in your body. You will feel like shit if you try to work out after eating Oreos and pizza and fucking licking the like, you know, tub of cake icing that you bought or that's been like sitting in your freezer for eight months, okay? That it, it is a natural punishment for incorrect behavior and a natural reward for positive behavior good for her i'm sure she's an inspiration to like i'm s i'm so mean in this video like I, I don't know whatever suburban housewives everywhere i'm so sorry i'm so sorry <laughs> oh but like seriously come on go to the gym go work out with weight it's like good for you you lost the weight you're you're 90 percent there just I, do you not want that? D does she not want the look? Do, do none of you want that look? You you want to look? I'm I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. But you want to look average? Like you actually just want to look like an average person? Is that is that what you want? Do you not want to turn heads as you walk down the street? Would that not make you feel better? Would that not boost your confidence and make you feel amazing? Is that not important to you? If it's not, fine. Go you know do your carnivore. Fucking worry about all this food shit all the time. Think about it obsessively and cry about how you fucking <laughs> sniff peanut butter jars like because you can't eat it, okay, I'd rather eat the fucking peanut butter, you know what I mean, and go to the gym and look better than most people. I'm so sorry, Laura. You'll never watch this, but I'm sorry anyway. So um, if you guys have recommendations for YouTubers or videos that you want me to take a look at, let me know, leave me a comment. Peace.